Ryo. Oh. He is this basketball player. Ryo. Very handsome. This is part three that we're talking about. Prior to that, it was part two where Pepe, Pepe left, and I'm really sad. Oh, Pepe wait. was this Italian、uh, manga artist. Pepe left in beginning of part three, actually.、Remember? In the beginning of part three, he was there for a majority of time. Oh my god, the first episode of part three where he finally saw his、um, his first publish. Yeah. Oh, I cried so much. Pepe is a really cool dude. He's、oh. a, he's an Italian、uh, manga artist that moved to Japan.、Uh, uh-huh. He was a, I forgot what inspired him exactly, but he came here to become a manga artist. And so his goal、yeah. in the house was to make sure that that dream came true. Yeah. And it finally did. And when it did, it was was his time to leave the home. Yeah. And、oh, that's it was it was interesting because the first time he ever saw his manga get published, he went to a convenience store and. Oh my God! This woman was crying her eyes out. Cause. It was such a great moment where he was just celebrating on his own. He looked at it, read it, looked through all the pages, realizing that it's published, it's out there,、mm-hmm. and nobody was around him. He didn't celebrate it、uh, with you know friends or whatever. He just looked at it, enjoyed it, and like absorbed that moment. And it was silent. And I was just tearing up because you could see how much you're tearing up right now as you're thinking you about. You see how hard he worked, <laughs> and it's just like, oh, what's got it? And oh my god, though, oh, and I'm gonna cry. I can't believe you're crying. <laughs> What are you crying for? It's just he works so hard. Mariel is、so、a very Mariel is a very sensitive soul. This is one of my funniest stories that she's ever done. So just to go back on the topic of us watching、oh, movies. Yeah, but- <laughs> yeah, udo, udo, udo. Oh, huge! But need... she, so you guys remember, you know, Paul Walker, rest in peace. He passed away. So <laughs> we went to go watch Fast and Furious. It was the last film that he was in where they had to put him in CG towards the end. This woman is so ridiculous. We're watching the film, and there's that part where it goes. It's been a long day without you, my friend, and I tell you all that that he put us. You know that that song.、Yeah. And then Paul Walker is in his car. He looks over. At Dom Toretto, they kind of smile. It's a CG version of himself, and then he drives. Vin Diesel, you mean? Dom Toretto. Yes, Vin Diesel is the actor name.、Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he didn't play. Of course, he, he said Paul Walker,、yeah. and I was like, okay. And then so he. That's true. That's my bad. But as he's driving off, they kind of look at each other, and that song、mm-hmm. comes on,、mm-hmm. and I see Mariel bawling her eyes out. As if she was at a funeral, like you were crying <laughs> so、something. much. Like I understand the tears part, right?、Uh-huh. But the amount that you were crying was unreal. And I, I looked over. I was invested. Okay, I grew up watching Fast and the Furious. I watched most of the sequels, so I'm invested in this. So、guy. did I. But the way you have no emotions. I no. I was a very emotional part, but it's not the fact that you cried. It was how、oh、much you were crying that threw me off. The song didn't help. Okay. And then the what she responded to was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I go, what? Why are you crying so much? Like in the theater, she goes, "It's my final goodbye." <laughs> <laughs> I was like. Are, are you best friends with Paul Walker? Do you, are you telling me that something? I know, did you used to date him or something? Okay, here, It's my final goodbye. I am invested in these. Okay, when I watch it, I imagine myself being in that moment, in that story. That's why when it, when Pepe was looking at it, nothing was happening. It was the grandma that was there that I think sent it over the edge. It did. It did. I was getting very emotional when I, I was just like, "Man, I'm so proud of you." I don't even know you, Pepe, but I know that you're very passionate. And you work really hard for it, and then you achieved、yeah. it. Yeah. Compo- uh, uh, eh? Composed. What? Oh my god, I lost the word. Yeah. Either way, she was、yeah. very, very emotional at that scene.、And、he was、yeah. actually one of my favorite characters, and the reason why is like, he has a quality that I really, really enjoy. So, it, and what I mean by that is that. I think, like growing up, for for me, anyways,、uh, people were categorized in in certain things, and you、mm. couldn't break out of it. Like, for example, if you were a jock, you were a jock, and、mm. and what came along with jock was that you were a muscle meathead that was that had a very low IQ. That's just what you were,、mm-hmm. right? In high school, I think a lot of people do that. Uh. Uh, if you're a、uh, if you're a geek, you're a nerd. You're、uh-huh. the guy that's a point dexter. He gets good grades. He's、yeah. never going to get a girlfriend. He's a dweeb, whatever, right?、Uh-huh. And then what we're finding out now, specifically. Specifically, because of like social media and people being able to show out, and they're finding that there's a community outside of this small little box that people put you in,、uh-huh. that you can be multiple things,、uh-huh. right? You can be a dweeb that's charismatic, that's charismatic, that has confidence,、mm-hmm. and that's what Pepe is.、Mm-hmm. Pepe is a fucking dweeb, but in the best way possible.、Mm-hmm. Like he's nerdy, he likes his little cartoon, his bangas,、mm-hmm. um, and he's kind of like. 
he's like freaking Italian as shit. <laughs> he's like hyper Italian. Yeah. Um, he's a shy Italian. Yeah. Shy, like he's a little bit more reserved than like the typical yeah. like machismo Italian yeah. man that, you know, that you kind of picture with like a rose in his mouth, like making <laughs> pasta every day. Yeah. Which well, he did make pasta almost every day. I know. And it looks so good. Yeah. Um, but he kind of like categorizes what I like about somebody is that you can be very cool. You can be very charismatic and confident, even mm -hmm. though categorically people think you're very dweeby mm -hmm. because dweeb is not an insult. It's just kind of like, it is what you are. Like mm -hmm. you're a dweeb. Like you're a geek. Yeah, you're you can nerd. be a geek or nerd or whatever, yeah. but it doesn't mean that you can't be cool. Yeah. And that's what I really liked about him because he kind of, he doesn't, he has no shame in. He's very true to himself. Yeah, he there's nothing to hide. be ashamed of. He doesn't perform like, you know, when he likes a girl, he, he shows who he is. Yeah, he's a good looking guy. Uh, he's like, he's not muscular or anything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. He's just, he has his charisma about him, his confidence. Yeah. He's very goal oriented. Very adorable, very passionate. He's, I think he has a good sense of humor. Very great sense of yeah, humor. Yeah, very positive. Mm -hmm. He's very optimistic. You know, it's just, you see the bright side of him. And yeah. I think that's very attractive. And so like, and it's, it's very refreshing for me to see because I see, or I used to see a lot of people and these are the people that I distance myself from now. Mm. It's like, uh, especially like in social media, mm. you know, some of these YouTubers, like when they were younger mm -hmm. or not even just YouTubers, like people who are actors or whatever, for some reason, there's this weird habit when people come into the city, mm. they stop being who they were before because they come into a new city and they try to create a new identity. Mm. But it's like, let me tell you something. If you were a dweeb, since you were fucking one years old, like I was, mm. you're a dweeb all the way through and through. It seeps out of your skin. Mm problem is now is like what i hate is the it doesn't have to be a dweeb or a nerd it could be mm. like a thug or whatever mm. you are who you are just mm. own it mm. and when you try not when you try to be something that you're not mm. it's so uncomfortable looking at you and being around you is this are you talking about people who are adults or? adults these are adults okay yeah because i'm thinking like well like college people go to college to oh, like college find to. find themselves but they don't know who they are yeah so they like put up a face on it, you know, they try to become a whole different person. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great phase to explore who you are. But then after you pass your college phase, like, I think that's when you should be really true to yourself. Or try, try to figure it out. And yeah. it, it, it's sad because it's not just a college thing. I thought that in college, that's where it would end because it was very prevalent in college. And I would mm -hmm. see that in a lot of people. For, mm -hmm. for example, there was this dude that I met in college. Uh, I talked about it before with Joe. His name was um, Andy. And long story Andy what? Uh, he was a Chinese dude. I can't remember. Andy Lamb. I want to say Andy. There was one, there was a guy named Andrew Jang and there was another dude named Andy. Oh God, it's blanking right now. But if I think about it, I'll remember his name. Uh -huh. But long story short, if people haven't heard this on the previous podcast with Joe, Andy was one of those guys that was clearly like, a, a, a geek in the worst way possible. Not a very cool geek or a nerd, mm -hmm. right? It's like, I had this other friend, his name was Tony. Mm -hmm. Tony, I love this guy to death. He was like a magnet school kid, mm -hmm. but just the coolest like nerd dude I ever met in my life, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this other kid, Andy, he 